Today I want to show you what I've been doing. Um, so this is a little warm up. I don't know how often I talk about warm ups. I do them all the time and I feel like I'm constantly talking about warm ups, about why you should do them, about how to do them, different options, different styles, different warm up possibilities. I feel like I'm just always talking about warm ups. Um, so this is the warm up I did last night. I'm going to talk about this egg in a second. This is a quail egg and it's absolutely awesome. And it's also really, really tiny. So um, let's see, here's an acorn. So you can see the size that I'm dealing with here. It's a little hard to see. I know. Everything's a little dark. <laughs> I'm in a very dark room with one little spotlight down here. So I hope this is sufficient. Um, so I've got a super tiny, I've got my smallest brush. This is my Da Vinci 1010. This is my Da Vinci Maestro 1010. Now, let's see if I can focus on that for you. I love the Maestro, which is German for, it's probably Italian actually, for master. Uh, so the master line of brushes, they are wonderful in so many ways. And the other one, the other types of brushes that I love are Rosemary and Co. And I have done uh, a review for you on Rosemary and Co. a while ago. Um, and I think I'll be doing a few more, hopefully in the future. They're sending me a few brushes to, to test out uh, sometime soon. Of course, I've been talking to Rosemary and Co. for two years, so sometime soon is quite relevant. <laughs> We'll see what that means. So yeah, this is the smallest, this is the 1010. And what I'm doing here, and I did this, I started maybe at nine o'clock last night. I probably did about an hour and I actually filmed it too. So I'll, I'll put the um, a fast forward version of all the squiggly marks of me putting that in here um, as I'm talking. Cause I think it was very interesting. I. You can see, when, when you see the, the fast forward, you can see that initially my marks were pretty chunky. And I was also using a larger brush. Okay, so I was using, oops, um, I did start off using the Da Vinci 2, number 2, um, which is significantly larger than number 1, right? Look at how much bigger that is. Um, and I did that for some of these larger marks in here. And then I went down... As I worked through, I started in the center, I believe. I worked over here and then I worked over there. And I saw progression. My muscle memory and my attention to detail and my ability to get things perfect was really improving. And so in my circles, um, I was noticing, can you guys see that if I go in a little closer? This is very interesting to take a moment and go back and kind of study your work, right? Because that's essentially what I'm doing here. I'm practicing, but I'm also studying. So I was doing circles and I found that my circles were looking like this. So I was going around, I was going really fat on one side. Okay, I'm exaggerating. And then I can do the other side. So with this tiny brush, I'm having a hard time going, oops, see if I can see that properly having a hard time going around and back with a larger brush it seems easier see even here there's there's a thick side and a thin side and so what i've been trying to do with these guys is do this a million times um and i'm finding that if i stand it up so i'm almost let's see if i can do that so you can see aha see and part of the issue is that when I go down, I can't go so close to the paper. So I think what I'm doing is I'm going around and then I'm pushing too close to the paper and then coming back up. So if I'm consistent, also it helps that I'm doing a larger circle because this tiny circle is really difficult. But let's see, it takes me a second. I always get quiet when I'm concentrating. Sorry about that and around and around and around we go. So I'm practicing my circles. I want to match these circles. Like this one, if that's what my circles are gonna look like, that's horrible, but this is really good. That's what I want. And I'm also noticing the more I water the paint down, um, the better it flows. So, oops, a little mess on that. So it's more like drawing. This is a terribly awkward position because you're slightly on an angle and I have to kind of look underneath the camera. But you get the idea, right? So I could do my circles by going 
you know, I could do one side and then I could do the other side. And obviously slower so they match perfectly. But you gotta keep practicing. It's so important to keep practicing. Um, and then way in here, these are micro tiny squares. So again, I was coming in and I'm practicing, practicing doing my little itty bitty squares because you don't want that fat bottom. I mean, you could, right? But I want to be able to control the brush. Now, I do this all the time and the more I do it, um, I feel like the better I get. <laughs> But also as a warm-up, because I find that if I don't paint for, let's say, 18 hours or 24 hours, I don't paint for a whole day, I go to pick up my brush and anything could be wrong. I could have a splinter because I was out in the garden. And I find that I can't, my hand doesn't want to paint the way it should. The paint doesn't flow properly. The brush feels a little awkward. But once I've sat down and done these, you know, as big or as small as I want to do them. And we're talking really tiny, like look how small this is. Okay, there I am. Now you can see, because when it's up close, it doesn't really look super small, but super tiny. And I don't find that this makes me tight. Now, obviously I have to concentrate that my shoulders don't get tight. That's a big thing. I don't want to tighten up my body, but, um, but I feel like this kind of makes me looser. My wrist relaxes a little bit. It becomes easier. I become confident. And so when I want to do a little line, it's like, well, that's simple. That's so much easier than doing my circles, right? Or doing a series of lines. Oh, no problemo. Um, obviously doing larger squares, also easy. Give that like a little 3D to it. Ta-da. Um, yeah, so so this is my warm-up that I've been working on right now. Now I do other warm-ups. I do, I also take out the brush and I'll do large swooping things. And I have a I have a class assignment uh, tutorial which is 30 minutes long that I just worked on for uh, Patreon. So for any of you who want to join our class assignments which is really in-depth um, extra tutorials that talk, or lessons, they're lessons, not really, well, some of them are tutorials, most of them are lessons, um, where you can follow along and work with me, and I do them with you, so I'm actually doing the lesson and posting my results and giving you feedback and obviously uh, giving you an assignment, so it's homework. Um, so I have a, a tutorial I worked on, it's about 30 minutes, for that, um, but that is a little bigger. It We're not doing super tiny things there, we're doing things like different brush strokes and such. Um, but there's a class assignment every, I think it's about every three days. This month I have been working on YouTube a little bit more, so there are other things. But last month I put out 16, was it almost 16 class assignments? A few of them might have been reference photos and other things. Yeah, so if you guys are interested in homework or wanting to know more, then come on over there and check it out. Sign up. Um, and if you don't want to sign up, you can also just check it out. You can also follow me without signing up. It's all that good stuff. Um, in the meantime, I really wanted to show you this and let you know that if you are struggling with your style, or if you're struggling with your technique, or if you're struggling with detail, uh, taking the time to do a warm-up, in the morning, in the evening, whenever you want to, whenever you have time. And it's really a doodle, but doodling with the brush. We paint, a lot of people like to paint, and then they get the markers out or the pencil crayons, and they do all their details that way. And while that is fine, and of course it works, um, the ability to paint everything all by yourself with a tiny brush, with a big brush, and being confident, this is what, you know, this really, it will improve your work. It will greatly improve your work. And uh, and I think it's a lot of fun. And when you're done, you've got this really wackety, nifty little card. Um, I could uh, you know, just sign it and put it somewhere, or I could give it to someone. It's just, you know, it's fun. 
So yeah, that's uh, that's my opinion for today. So this I wanted to say is a good example um, of something fun that we could paint if you guys are interested in learning how to do an egg. I love eggs. I have all kinds of eggs. Um, this is actually dried. It came from a friend of mine. And I think I really like the colors. There's like a little fuzz on there. I love the colors here. I love the, the differences and the shapes, the beautiful organic shapes. And I think um, it might be fun to paint this egg. So let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested in doing a little egg tutorial or a series of egg tutorials. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Toodaloo!